to my head. Let's see what Hannah Shoi Shouju Wu has for us today. Hey humans, or dancer Lamau, a classic callback to everyone's favorite song by the Killers. It's patch 9.16, the one where Pantheon falls from the skies. Wow, cool. Pantheon. We've already had a look at him. Uh, does this have all of his stuff? The only one I'm not sure about is his E, which looks like it has wind wall capabilities, like visually. Yeah, it does some kind of wind walling thing. Well, more like Brahm Shield, but. Zoom. I guess we'll see how it plays out. He looks cool. He's probably going to be somebody that people int on all the time, like most other top laners. We'll see. Azir, a little... A uh, little nerf on max level Q here. Not if you take it and main him. That's true. In which case, I'd own every game. I wonder how much damage his ult is going to do. I hope that it doesn't scale, really. like I don't want him to one-shot people off of his ult. He should have to land stuff. I think he's still going to be like a one-shot character, though, where you just jump on top of somebody and kill him. Uh, a little bit of an Azir nerf and a Corky nerf. They were having problems with these two characters in professional play especially. Corky was kind of everywhere and nobody knew how to deal with them. I hope that they... Did they remove that uh, package thing? Let's just jump to the bug fixes. I hope that they did because people, everybody was complaining about that. Uh... I guess not. Quirky package notification. Like, it was bad since the, uh... Since the fucking release of the character. I guess that they're not getting rid of it? Yeah. Oh well. I thought that they'd just take it out. Because if they're changing something about the character, they should probably just rip that out as well. Whatever. 30% tenacity at all ranks. That's really good. And... The E cooldown goes down to 4 seconds? Damn. I always felt like Dr. Mundo is like a pretty fucking strong uh, character that nobody just really plays because he's ugly but you can get stomped by a Dr. Mundo really easily 30% tenacity is really nice and I understand why they just gave it at all ranks that's good gives them nicer matchups too makes them uh, better versus Riven and makes them better versus uh, Aatrox I guess with the new Kled, there's a way to deal with them, but people don't normally counterpick very often, so... Oh, it's also better versus Renekton. He has a lot of good matchups, people that can't, uh... The, the old thing used to be you pick Dr. Mundo if they have a bunch of AP because you're going to build Spirit Visage anyway, and you're going to have so much uh, regen that it's... It was just an incredibly cost-effective way to get magic resist on your team. But I think that he has a couple of good matchups. He might be a good, like, stomp character in 
low elo. Echo. Echo has room for more power in all areas of play. I kind of agree with that. Cooldown down to 50 seconds at max on R, which is good. Phase dive. I'm fine with this. One thing that's interesting about Echo that most people think is uh, it, his passive on uh, Q, I guess, right? You get the passive on Q, or is the passive on E? Uh, that's just as passive in general. Uh, basic attack steal 3% plus 3% 3 per 100 AP of the target's missing health. So it's like an execute. So people think that it should, like... They go up to people and go whack, 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 and it doesn't fucking kill anybody, and they're like, what the hell? It's missing health. Uh, and it caps out at 30%, I guess. So it's a passive on his... Uh, is W. His regular passive is a three strike. Which does no damage either. So this does nothing. Oh, I see. That's why. Okay. So this doesn't even have a uh, this doesn't even have HP scaling. It's just the passive on his E. Okay. So he does passive magic, passive bonus damage through his W passive. But his regular passive just doesn't hit very hard. That's what's going on. I see. He's a cool character, though. I think Echo's really fun to play. 50% nerf on the ability power ratio on Q, which is good. And E's cooldown is going up by 6 seconds at rank 1. Damn, boy. Fiora. Cooldown decreased early. That Fiora that was in my game is gonna be a fucking monster now. It made her even better. She gets plus 90% bonus attack speed. Damn. That sounds really good. People are complaining about this Jax uh, buff as well. I don't think that it's super critical. There weren't a lot of times in lane where I was like, oh my god, if only Leap Strike was two seconds longer cooldown, I would have killed him. I guess you do leave it at level one. You max a uh, double first on. I think it's W max. Yeah, W max. So if you're leaving it at rank 1 for a while, I guess that, that is a considerable buff, but I don't know. Seems fine to me. Uh, this was nice too. Cassidy got some extra damage on his W. Strengthening the aspects of Cassidy that can keep some of the shorter range mid laners in check, especially if they're champions he should naturally be good against anyway. AP Assassins. LeBlanc. 
Not point one percent scaling on the Q, that's fine. I don't really like this change. I don't think that support Lux needed any buffs. She seemed pretty good. Changes here to Nocturne. Just little tiny buffs. The attack speed bonus on W goes up by 10% at all ranks. Yeah, whatever. Twelve at all ranks instead of scaling down to ten. It's fairly significant. Especially if you play Riven all the time. Like you kinda know when your Q is gonna be back up, so that might screw you up a little bit. Well, she did need a touch of scaling down. I probably would have taken damage off of her alt, but the mobility's fine too. Sejuani. Sejuani has been a dominant force in pro play for a while. Well, what do you expect? So, 10 flat from 20 flat. But the bonus armor scales better. Arctic Assault, cooldown, up by 3 seconds at rank 1, and only up by 1 second at the end, whatever. The passive was always important, I don't think that this is going to change a hell of a lot, but it's nice anyway. She's just got a really good kit for not sucking. I feel like you could move her. She has like a three hit passive as well for that little stun. I feel like you could even move that up to four hits. Sejuani. It's here, the permafrost, right? No, that's her. Active. If the targeted enemy has four stacks of frost. Ah, okay, so it is four stacks. Here I am proposing changes that the game has always had. Whatever, probably not that big of a deal. This sort of shit makes me so mad that they don't... Dude, you have 2,000 employees. You can't make a new Sejuani video? Come on, dude. The map's been updated for, what, five years? Might be time to get uh, one of the interns on making a Sejuani video for you. Anyway, whatever. Chen Q, empowered damage ratio increased, E base damage increased, that's fine. K pop Sejuani. Uh, giving Singed a little extra oomph so his insanity can lead him to some more wins if he makes it to the late game. Wow, attack speed growth going up? Damn, awesome. Mana regen flattened, so he gets a... What is... F base mana's up by 40. Okay, that's fine. He's gonna attack faster than Kog'Ma. I agree with this. Mana regen. It was 8.0008 before. That was very important to have that uh, one ten thousandth.
of an uh, of mana regen. How will he survive the nerf? Uh, damage is going up a little bit and removed. Uh, no longer deals 80% damage against monsters. So, jungle scion buff. I'm fine with this too. Ricochet damage down by 20% at rank 1. Which is fine, because who cares? Super is strong. When coupled with Yumi, she's especially strong. The cat is getting nerfed. Spoiler alert! Good. That's what I was crying about earlier. You remember? I was crying, I said, what the hell? Twenty-five percent bonus damage. They just gave her a buff, didn't they? Or no? I'm thinking of a uh, Sin uh, Lissandra. They gave Lissandra a buff. They didn't touch Sintra. She needed something to. I think putting power into the Q is fine though, because you can actually dodge these. These are pretty fun ability to dodge, in my opinion too. But did they slow the projectile though? The damage is down. Not at rank 1, though. The slow is reduced by 20% at rank 1, which is good. And the duration is a flat 1.5 seconds. I thought that they would make the projectile slower. It's okay, though. No big deal. Build duration down to 2 seconds. More vulnerable to ganks as a countermeasure to the safety he brings, his already safe bot lane buddies, like Ezreal. I don't like that change a lot. I think that you pick Tom Kench as, like, just a man to pick people up. Now, I guess this isn't super meaningful. That 10 movement speed is much more meaningful, in my opinion, than the shield duration. I don't know why you have to hit him. He seems... I think that there should be characters that you can pick and you're like, okay, we want extreme safety. Pick Tom Kench. Give him a reason to be picked. Tom, to Tom Top was super strong, but they nerfed the shit out of him. They super duper nerfed him. He's at 50% now, but they have, uh, they have per patch, right? Here he was when he was super duper strong at 52%. And then they nerfed the shit out of him. He went down to 48, and then he bumped back up a little bit because they gave him some power back. I don't know, I don't think that he is super obnoxious anymore. This was a problem in 913, but they fixed that and took him down to 42nd place, and now he's up to 24th place, so I don't really mind. I was kind of okay with him top two, but he should just have matchups that he gets punished for. Like, he... He could just walk at people and they would die, which is a giant problem. The, the biggest nerf that they did to him, uh, his Q doesn't deal, doesn't apply stacks anymore. Like his auto attack stacks, he used to be able to tongue somebody and then they'd be slowed and you would just walk up to them and then tongue them a couple more times and get the stun. It was really stupid. I feel like they're going to nerf Yumi a lot more in the future too. She's obnoxious to play against. Biscuit delivery. I'm changing some stuff here. Biscuits from 4 to 3. They show up at 2 minutes, 4 minutes, and 6 minutes. 10% of missing health. Hmm. 
Mm. Moving it forward a minute is kind of good, but I don't think that it's... Because it depends, like, if you look at the trees, let's just do it in the, in the client. So you're definitely going to take boots. And then there was actually a fairly meaningful choice of if you were going to take uh, biscuits or you were going to take the extra 5% CDR. Like, you take this mid lane, but if you're taking this as your secondary tree bottom, this is just the choice that you make, or you go with this, which is also really good. I don't think that they needed to nerf that. Whatever. But they are upset. Like, I think that eventually they're just going to have to nerf Ezreal. Because Ezreal is the biggest problem down there that's, like, abusing this shit because he's going like this. He gets so much stuff for free. So I guess that they want to make it more meaningful for you to... Like, this is just kind of a dead mastery in itself, the one that lets you go into debt. I don't think that that's really used on anybody. Maybe Singed. But this is, like, half dead. What does this one do again? Fifteen percent movement speed towards nearby ally champions that are movement impaired or enemy champions that you impair. I guess that's okay. I think that they'll have to nerf Ezreal again. Would be my guess. I don't think that that's the problem here. Whatever. Honor 5 reward. You did it. Your Honor 5 capsule will contain a random emote or ward skin, as well as an Honor 5 token you can redeem for Medieval Twitch, Grey Warwick, or one of the two new chromas shown above. If you already own the base skin. That's cool. You don't need to own both skins before being able to pick a chroma for a skin you own. But actually, this season, only your Honor 5 capsule will contain two Honor 5 tokens because we promised you two chromas this season, not one. If you hit Honor 5 before 9.16 and already own both Medieval Twitch and Grey Warwick prior to getting your capsule, We'll add your two Honor 5 tokens directly to your account during patch 9.16. We're unifying Challenger and Grandmaster's 0 LP demotion rules with Master's existing rules. This is mainly an edge case change since losing LP over a few days or weeks naturally demotes a player into masters before they reach zero LP. Though in smaller servers it's it'll also address situations where it was near impossible to demote out of challenger. Losing a game at zero LP in Grandmaster or Challenger demotes you to Diamond One. based on whether your MMR is higher than the Master's cutoff. Between the Master and Diamond 1 cutoff, or lower than the Diamond 1 cutoff. Huh. That's a bummer. So you can demote from Challenger to Diamond 1?
Hmm. That sounds really shitty. Whatever. Little bug fixes. Nautilus is W. Lee Sin's hitbox will no longer warp across the map when casting Q. Okay. Uh, properly grant an additional stack of Conqueror Electrocute. Whatever. This change wasn't, no, this patch wasn't as big as I thought it would be. These are all pretty minimal changes. Biggest things are probably the Ezreal 6 second on E. Uh, Fiora getting higher scaling stuff on her E will make people want to pick her. And this Yumi change seems pretty insignificant, except for the slow duration change. I'm fine with the max. It like laning against Yumi is the most annoying part. I don't I don't care at all past laning. It just seems fine. Uh but when you're against her, it's just so obnoxious. Hannah Shoi showed you woo. TFT patch notes I'd probably. I don't think that they have them combined anymore though. <laughs> 